We all love small bites and sandwiches. So do the Venetians. I'm gonna show you four Venetian cecchettis and the perfect spritz to go along with them. I can't wait to share Venetian Cicchetti with you. That sounds funny, doesn't it? But actually what it means is small snacks or sandwiches. We're gonna make four different Cicchettis so I can show you the range of Cicchetti there is in Venice. We're gonna make a Grissini, which is breadstick, a breadstick wrapped with some prosciutto. We're gonna use some smoked trout, avocado, and lemon. Next up, we're gonna do some soft cheese, Fontina, topped with a little bit of jam. And finally, we're gonna do a gorgonzola, one of the beautiful blue cheeses of Italy, topped with a fresh strawberry macerated or marinated in balsamic vinegar. So I wanna show you how to marinate your strawberries in balsamic. It's super easy. All you do is you take your strawberries and you just put some balsamic vinegar on it. Now we're gonna let those sit for a while in the vinegar. I wanna get enough on there. Well, we start with our cecchetti. And we set these aside. So the first one we're gonna make is the easiest. And it's kind of like mm, a meat lollipop. <laughs> so these are the grissini. And grissini are breadsticks from Northern Italy and they're typically very thin like this, and sometimes they can be super long. This breadstick is gonna be wrapped in prosciutto. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of prosciutto. So just a piece of prosciutto, and it's rolled up so nicely. And I'm just gonna lay it on my cutting board, and then I'm just gonna roll it right up like that and it's gonna join its friends there on my platter. One really fun thing about having the cecchetti is you sit down and just ask for it and they bring out whatever they have that day. There's all kinds of fishes and little meats, little cured meats like prosciutto, on little sandwiches, just tiny little bites. But it's so fun to do that with a group because then you just keep pa passing around the platters and the plates. And one more. So this is an authentic recipe that's got two ingredients in it, and it's gonna be so easy for you to make it at home. So come on, there we go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Remember, you don't want it to be perf anything to be perfect out of your kitchen. You want it to look beautiful and appetizing, but you don't want it to look perfect because then it looks like you bought it at the grocery store. And we definitely did not do that. Look at that. Grissini wrapped um, with prosciutto. Yum! Okay, so there's our first one. Next up, we're gonna do one that is very traditional. I've had this so many times in Venice. And when, we, when the um, waitress brings it out and says what it is, people kind of look at me and go, hmm, am I gonna like this? Trust me, you're gonna love it. This is just a little bit of like ciabatta bread, a little bit um, chewier bread with a crust on it. And the first thing that's gonna go on here is just a little slice of avocado. So there goes my avocado. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to top that avocado. Ooh, it was a little sticky. That just means it's good, it was very ripe. Okay, now, this may look scary, but don't be scared. This is just smoked trout. You can find it in your grocery store, and the smoked trout comes just like this, and it's got skin on it. You can see it right here. So I'm gonna take the trout and just break it into some pieces. 
you might find any kind of trout. Okay, so there we go. And I'm going to put it right on top of this little sandwich. And of course, the trout that they'll have that they um, pull out of the water in Italy might be a little bit different, but it's still the same idea. So just two more little pieces. And I don't want to get any of the skin in there because I want, oops, come on. Now balance. Lost a piece of trout here. Okay, one more. And I'll come on this side. You could even use uh, smoked salmon for this because it's oily just like some of this trout is. Okay, so last but not least, we want to have a little bit of lemon with this one. So I'm just going to put in my, I put on my plate some lemon so everybody can grab a cecchetti and a wedge of lemon to squeeze over it. That's it. Isn't that fun? Whoops. I'm going to put it right back up. There we go. Isn't that fun and beautiful? Okay, so there's my second cecchetti. I'm going to set my trout aside and my avocado. Next up, we're going to start with the cheese. What's wrong with that? Um, the next one we're going to do is, and you see I'm just using some various rustic breads. Of course, at home, if you're just doing this uh, for a dinner or a snack, you don't have to make all of these. Um, but if you're having people over, these are super easy appetizers, and you can tell them what cecchetti is, and then you can accompany it with a spritz, which we're going to do in just a moment. So you can use any kind of Italian cheese. You can use an aged Asiago or a softer Asiago. You can use a Fontina. What you want is something that is semi-soft, not hard. And I'm going to take the wax off this, set it aside. And now what I'm going to do is grab some Fontina off this wedge. So here it goes. And I love that when you do this, you can have so many different little bites and they're so easy to pick up and to enjoy. And then you're all going to get a taste of Northern Italy. Imagine sitting beside the water, enjoying this cecchetti and a spritz with friends. It just sounds magical, and it is. All right, now I'm ready to put my jam onto my cheese and bread. So I'm going to get a spoon, and I'm going to put a healthy amount of jam, a big teaspoonful of jam, on top of each one of these sandwiches. You can use any kind of jam. Of course, in Venice, they would use whatever they had from the fruit that they had made, or the fruit jam. Of course, in Venice, they'd use whatever fruit jam they had that they've made themselves. I'm using a strawberry and orange jam here. Aren't those cute? Oh my gosh! Now, this sounds funny, but I'm going to use some parsley. I want to add some more color to this, but I also want to have a little bit of green flavor with that sweet strawberry and that creamy flavor of the cheese. So just a little bit of parsley on top of each one of these. And here we go. There's our third Venetian cecchetti. Okay, we've got one more to go, and this is always one of my favorites. Remember that I soaked my, or marinated, I guess you could say, my strawberries in the balsamic vinegar earlier? You know, balsamic comes from Modena, which is part of northern Italy. It's also the place that Parmesan and prosciutto come from. It's a magical, wonderful place to visit. 
So now I have my little strawberries. I'm gonna grab another spoon just so I can put them out. And I'm gonna put these balsamic soaked strawberries right on the bread. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the vinegar, the sweet vinegar and the sweet, sweet strawberries. So here we go. Oh my gosh, I wish y'all were here with me because it smells so incredibly good. There you go. And I like getting just a little drizzle of the vinegar. And what we're gonna top these strawberries with is some tangy but sweet gorgonzola cheese. Almost done here. So you're gonna need about three or four strawberries for four of these little breads. I'm gonna put one more right in here, cause I can. All right, here's my gorgonzola. So you can find this in more of a gourmet store, but you might even be able to find it in a grocery store that had a great cheese section. So all I'm gonna do now is take some of my gorgonzola and literally crumble it right on top of my sandwich. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. And it's very messy because the gorgonzola is creamy and yummy. Here we go. Just a couple more. Oh, it's gonna be so hard to not lick my fingers, y'all, but I promise I won't. And I think I cheated that first one, so I'll give it just a little bit more. All right, now what I'm gonna do is wipe off my hands before I do our final step on our balsamic strawberries and that is I am going to whoops I still have a little bit on my hand I'm going to do something that sounds crazy but it's really good and that is I'm putting some black pepper on it black pepper balsamic and strawberries are a match made in heaven So there goes my pepper on top of them. And that is our fourth Venetian cecchetti. In Northern Italy, everyone eats cecchetti and has a spritz with it. A spritz indicates that it has a little bit of alcohol and a lot of spritz. The spritz comes from Prosecco, the sparkling wine of Northern Italy. And I've got a glass filled with ice right here. And I have my Prosecco. So my iced glass, I'm gonna put about three parts of Prosecco in here. Now sometimes you can have a spritz with just sparkling water and our next ingredient, but the ones with Prosecco are definitely more authentic. Typically when you are in Northern Italy, you get a choice between a number of kinds of spritz spritzes um, but the two most popular are either Aperol or Campari. My favorite's Campari, so that's what I'm gonna use today. Campari is a liqueur that has lots of herbs in it and it's very bitter. But, so I'm gonna use about two parts. Campari, isn't that a gorgeous color? It's very bitter, but it's mellowed out by the fruit forward Prosecco. Last but not least, you always have an orange slice on your spritz, and it's always served in a big wine glass with lots of ice because it's refreshing with the light snacks. So here's your spritz, here's your cinchetti, and I hope that I have taken you on an armchair trip to Venice. <laughs>